Hello everybody, Curious Corduroy here, and this is the second part of my Dank Souls 3 playthrough. I just like calling it Dank Souls, it's fun, but this is my Dark Souls playthrough that I'm doing for part 3. Uh, very, very excited. In this video, the gist and rundown is basically me running around Firelink Shrine without the tower key for now, and obtaining some really cool items, and getting the Uchi Katana. So, right here is an exploit that I learned about. Uh, if you time it correctly, you can bounce off of the tree and land on the very top uh, of the Firelink Shrine right here. So, no joke, trying to accomplish that took me six minutes of just running back and forth, trying my best to get onto the roof. It got to the point where I legitimately thought that maybe they patched it out and you could no longer do it. But eventually, perseverance came through and I made it onto the roof collecting a homeward bone. Right here, we will get back to that area in just a second, but I'm going to make my way around the roof of the Firelink Shrine and uh, trying to find some cool items. So, to the left, you can see that jerk wad waiting for me with the Uchi Katana. It was a real pain in the ass, but ironically, we'll come back to him later in the video. But I make a, a right uh, around the roof of the Firelink Shrine. And I end up running into one of these little twinkling titanite bugs. I don't remember if that's the actual name. Filthy casual over here. I can't remember the name of the bugs. But if you are able to take them out before they run away and disappear, you'll get some twinkling titanite, which is very helpful in upgrading your armor, your weapons, shields, all that good stuff. So after I took them out, I made my way back to the opening here on the roof to get to the very top of the Firelink Shrine. Uh, so there's some extra cool stuff up here as well. In the very center, there is a bird's nest. Again, I don't remember if it's a crow or a raven. Filthy casual, I'm sure somebody's going to call me that. I'm by no means an expert on Dark Souls. I just very much enjoy playing it. But um, the cool thing about these nests are you can drop items and get rewards in return. So uh, to the left of that is actually an Estus shard, which is going to come in handy um, in reinforcing your Estus flask. But right here, I decided to drop a firebomb for the bird uh, just to see what I would get in return. And I did end up getting, I believe, a large titanite shard as a reward. Uh, but I did learn that you can't drop two of the same item and expect a reward. So I dropped the first firebomb here and I cut it out, but I dropped a second one, but I didn't receive anything in return. So uh, I guess you can't leave two of the same item and expect a return. A reward in return which kind of sucks but uh, in front of the bird's nest there is an illusionary wall so you just run up and smack it and it looks like there's nothing here at first but if you just go to the very end and roll off you're gonna come to a hallway which is going to contain the covetous silver serpent ring which is incredibly useful it took me uh, throughout my entire journey of the first Dark Souls it aided me in that and I love the ring it's going to help you collect more souls when you defeat enemies. Uh, it's a very handy ring, so I'm sure it's really going to help out in Dark Souls 3, just like it did in the first one. So after getting that Estus Shard, I go to see Andre the Blacksmith, and I just reinforce my Estus Flask uh, to add on the number of uses. So I now have four uses for my shards. Uh, well, my Estus Flask, not my shards. So after that, I decide, you know what? I think I'm physically ready. I'm mentally ready and prepared to take on that asshole with the Uchi Katana. So I leave the Firelink Shrine and I'm like, yes, I'm going to fight this guy. I'm going to try and get him to fall off whatever I can to get that weapon. So I make my way back and lo and behold, he's not there anymore, but he dropped some items for me. And one of those items happened to be the Uchi Katana. So I don't know when in the world this happened. I'm assuming that when I was on the very top of the Firelink Shrine, he was probably trying everything he could to get to me. And he must have fallen off the building or the edge of the castle and killed himself. So then when I came back after using a bonfire, all of his equipment was there waiting for me. So I'm ecstatic that I have the Uchi Katana. Unfortunately, I cannot utilize it just yet. Uh, I can't use it one-handed nor can I use it two-handed properly, or efficiently, rather. Uh, as you can see, there's still an X above there on the right-hand corner of the weapon. But all that matters is that I have it, and I also have the raw mod to upgrade it, which I didn't record this section of the gameplay, 
But I did go back to, I believe it was called The Great Wall of Lothric. Or, or it's Lothric is in the title. I have yet to memorize the locations. But I did journey through that area. I collected some items, defeated some enemies. But the most important thing was the Raw Maw, which I believe was the name of the item. Which I'm going to use later on to upgrade the Uji Katana. So uh, that's pretty much the video. Just some cool secrets flying around here in the Firelink Shrine. I am Curious Corduroy. If you like the video, click the like button. If you want to subscribe and see more, click that button as well. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully this was okay. <laughs>